Okay, guys, this would be the second part of the software improvements. Uh, I did the first part, roughly 11 stuff, 11 improvements, or some of them are actually bug fixes. Now let's continue. So another thing I, I like to use is tent mode, right? So let's use tent mode, right? So let's do tent mode like this, right? Um, you can't see it, but hopefully you can see it here, right? This is tent mode. And when you actually charge it, I charge it and I would love to leave it charging with something like, like being tent mode, right? Um, and I think when you charge, I've seen this where this will actually not rotate. This thing will get, this time right here will get huge, but it doesn't rotate. Even though it knows it's in tent mode, that to me be nice if I'd be in tent mode, charging at night, leave it on my nightstand, and this thing rotates, the time date rotates, and it gets large. So, and then, of course, along with a double tap, I can actually double tap, you know, wake up or have my alarm turn on. The alarm is turning on. I wake up, double tap. The time's there. The date's there. You know, whatever notation you put in, in your, your lock screen is there. That'd be awesome. They do that, but they don't do that right now. Uh, when you put in tent mode, this thing doesn't rotate. It does get bigger, but it doesn't rotate. Um, that'd be great. So next thing is keyboard, right? So I have my keyboard. Um, so I will um, set my keyboard to be one-handed operation here or here, right? So that's great because it allowed me, because things why my hands are small. That'd be great, I think, for it, for you, for it, for an option to, this is, I actually set this up. If I hold this keyboard, it'd be awesome if I hold it for a couple seconds, it allows you the option to switch one hand or a full screen board. That'd be a software improvement where I can hold this down. I believe other company have actually did the one hand operation where you, if you hold the, the screen down, you can kind of make the, make your screen smaller. But I don't want my screen smaller. I want my keyboard to be, hold it down, have the option to do, you know, one-handed keyboard. Uh, that'd be awesome. Okay. Uh, the next thing is, you know, battery life, right? So, not battery life, but I, I think Android 11 had the ability to actually um, show you a week, a week worth of screen on time. So I think that that should be default enabled in Android 11. Um, so. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And the next thing that you probably don't think about it that much, but uh, I I think about it because when I use it in FOMO a lot, it, it affects me. So you see this uh, fingerprint scanner right here? Uh, I use that a lot. Uh, but when you're in FOMO, it's hard to put your finger or thumb here. And I have small hands, but Imagine you have bigger hands where your thumb's bigger. It's hard to do that. Here, I can do that. I mean, you actually, when you do your fingerprint, you have to uh, do it like that. You gotta do the edge, right? So, the reason why that happened is because there's no notch here, right? See, there's a notch here on this side for your finger, but there's no notch here. They have this thing where I think it helps you hold it. I guess that's the whole point. But uh, it also prevents you from getting your finger in there to scan your fingers. So, you know, this is harder and then this is even harder because it depends on how, how, how big your fingers, your thumbs. So again, uh, the improvement would be, A, can you next bumper cut a notch here so that both these are, you know, there's a notch in both these, these screens, the bumper from both these screens, you can place your finger there also helps with holding it too but now you can actually you know put your whole thumb there or your finger there to scan it's a lot easier so that'd be cool uh, right um the other thing nice to have this tray 
I know you pull it down, you have the most frequently used app. Um, it'd be nice to have an option to put most frequently used app here, the tray. Um, maybe you shouldn't. Maybe, you know, you can actually move all these apps in here, the main screen. But it'd be nice to put the most frequently app an option to put most frequently app here. So then you can just, you know, the last six apps or whatever app and of course you like to scroll the app tray you can put there and it allows you to you know launch your, the, the freaking app that you always like to launch right that's uh, option uh, so then the next thing is um youtube right this is you know you, you're watching youtube video i like to watch it in tent mode right uh, full screen right um, sorry probably hopefully it shows up but tent mode so full screen right and with full screen I'm watching this for a while I want to see what time is going on you know what's the time how long <laughs> am I need to go back to work or call to the meeting if I have a call to the meeting I can't swipe down to notification I have to swipe to this side and swipe down. The reason why this side is important because this is where your gesture begins or your three buttons or whatever because remember they don't switch I, like I said I want to switch this to the bottom so that you can do more intuitive right tent mode I'm watching it like this is more intuitive to do stuff on the top and the bottom not on the side. So so again in order to get notification of I need to actually swipe to the side and swipe down and to get the time I need to do that too so so in order to get time I gotta do this right so I got go this way swipe sideways and down avoid that I cannot swipe down and get notification time and of course like I say move this three button gesture uh, double tap to the side in tent mode. Uh, that was a previous thing I mentioned before. Uh, that'd be great. Um, so we talked about uh, double tap to dismiss. You know, I don't like you know, I previous video where I say double tap sometimes doesn't work right. There's there's a couple places time where it doesn't work and and you do it double tap you miss one of the tap you double tap again you actually would dismiss and open a, a app in the tray right so I have not enabled double tap this because I normally don't use it but uh, normally if you double tap option there's a little bar at the bottom and you just double tap this right I don't have it enabled so you would double tap and sometimes you actually by mistake since Sometimes it doesn't work. You hit you and it will just open this app, open the phone call, where app that you have here. Um, fix it. Uh, this is actually a bug, you know, improvement, I guess, in software improvement. I guess it's considered a bug. Uh, so it's double tap is not reliable, so don't use it. But that's why I don't use it because sometimes you miss it the tap and you open the app right there. Um, dual screen camera. Um, camera is always on the right side of the photo on the left side so let me uh, let's see let, let me open a camera for you let me see I don't want to show my face okay let's okay so here's the camera right oops all right so cameras right here right so that was my setup uh, if you span it so what I'm talking about is when you span an app, you notice that the camera is always here. I believe it's here, but it's not just the camera. Every app is like that. Outlook, span. The actual emails here, the email selections here, but the, the email here is here. And the whole point here is that the thing that you care about the most is really reading the details of your email, right? 
so if you notice like uh, the cameras here because that's more important right yeah hey, I'm taking picture I'm pressing the button taking pictures the email that you read the bigger display of per email is here on the right um, so everything one note same thing for one note if you do one note same thing happens uh, if I can get my one note so one note right so again pick the notes is here right so so again it seemed to be optimized for for apps that span, you can span across two screen that works that's optimized for two screen is made for right handers right hand I'm serious so the main thing that you want to view the details you want to view the per email the notes you want to view the camera you want to take picture is on the right side always is optimized for right handers I'm a lefty I wish there's an option to optimize span when you span the app is optimized for it the dual screen allows you to optimize for left handers too an option to do left-handed or right-handed so it looked like it's for right-handed I, I, I can kind of tell that um, so so pretty much Outlook OneNote Teams anything that Microsoft apps that is optimized for dual screen it was always right-handed uh, I wish they had the option to left-handed too um, and kind of the last thing I want to talk about is very similar to what I mentioned before uh, is when you are essentially make the screen wider here and you want to let's look at somebody's reply here and you want to go backward right can I go back here yes I can go back here right I just swipe back and that's a gesture to kind of go backward I love it great it's intuitive right you swipe here but guess what you can't do this you dismiss here the reason again like I say <coughs> the gesture dismiss the three buttons are always here even though you're in vertical mode you span the app across you're in vertical mode dismiss is still here you can go backward here I wish again make it more intuitive make it like using tool screen like a tablet or whatever move this three buttons down here allow you to actually navigate uh, essentially right allows you to you know go back we're here and go back we're here but in order to do that they need to move this three button gesture uh, functionality to the bottom when you're in vertical span dual screen book mode bottom here you this if you get this way you are rotated uh, bottom here then I can use this backward backward that's intuitive that is making use of the vertical span uh, nap across two screen that is more intuitive than being you know it's, well, hopefully it rotates it doesn't rotate <laughs> <coughs> but uh, 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 it's more intuitive than oh it's always stuck on this side <coughs> which is kind of what happened right now again it just make it more flexible more polish polish you can say that but I wish they can do that right so that is everything I can think of I think there's a couple of bugs in that list uh, but there's mostly improvements and um, I think they will do some of these I'm pretty sure the moving the gesture three buttons at the bottom I don't see them doing that but that, if they do that'd be great that I mean they were thinking about optimizes making feel like using it dual screen you know uh, because I'm pretty sure I have not used a foe too but I'm pretty sure the foe does that uh, uh, but I 
I'm pretty sure anything that's be default Android 11, they probably will have it in there. And I, the biggest thing I'm waiting for is a double tap to, just, to, to turn off the screen, turn on the screen. That is to me the biggest feature that can help this, uh, the surface. And it also avoid having that feature where the surface must detect in FOMO which screen you, you, you rotate to. If you, you have a double tap to enable, disable, that is the biggest feature. Split screen is also a big feature. Anything by default, Android 11, if they can just add those in, it would be health. Anything else I mentioned before is more like optimizing the dual screen um, uh, ability, the gesture and everything. So that is the last video of this, I hope. And I will probably make one more video about quality reliability and why what happened, why they released Surface and why that is a bad thing. And what does that really mean? How would you interpret that? How you interpret Microsoft as a, a company that talk about quality library when you release Surface with so many bugs. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think I'm done. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. I'll probably post this video on Reddit and 